this is a, a time of enormous opportunity for any arts organisation that has an archive in whatever format because the computers are fast enough, the network is there, and the technology is around to enable you to digitise almost anything and get it to an audience. I think the opportunities are vast and enormous, but you need to think, what would be the most exciting single thing for us to do with our archive? You're actually transforming yourself as an organisation because you're beginning to open up your own past and your own works to exploration and interpretation by others. There are a wide range of possible business models. Obviously, for some organisations, what they do with the archive will essentially be marketing. They will want to give it away, they'll want to make it freely available so people are drawn to what they're doing now. Others will see commercial opportunities, uh, perhaps in licensing their material to third parties to use in, in programmes or, or elsewhere. Arts organisations can use open content licensing to provide access and reuse of their collections but at the same time build value-added business models around that. So, for example, they could provide access to low-resolution um, images of their collection works under a Creative Commons licence and then charge for high-resolution images. In terms of making money, there could be spin-offs, there could be possibilities at some point, but if you start with that, I think you'll end up with a very narrow um, vision of how your archive can be used. I'm sure if you ask people what the biggest hurdle is, they will say rights. There's no guarantee that an organisation will have the rights to reuse material that it may have recorded with performers, using music, using materials. The majority of rights holders in any creative and arts content want two things. They want recognition for the work that they've done and if possible they want a share of any revenue that's going to be achieved through putting that content on the web. Um, Quite often, recognition comes higher up the needs list than, than monetary value because they recognise it's not going to be a great deal of income. I think there's genuine and understandable concern that if you start making your work available online, then you're going to stop bringing people into the live space and experience the live thing. I think it's the reverse. And we've seen that, of course, happen with music publishing online and so on, that actually what you do is you increase the interest and the informed audience who then actually wants to come into the venue. You can see a dance artist progress their practice of performance and of making over a period of 10 years, 10 or 15 years on my archive. And that means that the world of dance is... Um, is dismantled and opened up in a different way for observers. One of the key benefits of creating digital assets is that it begins to change the nature of the organisation itself. And if that's going to happen, then the whole organisation has to become involved. Lots of people who are responsible for, for artworks in galleries or for recordings of performances are very, very worried about the possibility of user comments, user reviews, people adding either inappropriate facts to, to websites, all those sorts of things. And it is a legitimate fear. But the expectations of the audiences of the viewers are very high now. Not giving them some way of communicating is going to make them feel locked out. We have to find a way of letting go our branding and our ownership of, um, of how those objects are, are, are represented. Um, and that involves a level of trust of the audience and a level of uh, a trusting relationship with the audience. My view is that it's very much that you provide tools through the archive for the user to think about their own curatorial process. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they therefore change what is then available for the world through that archive. In fact, I think that's problematic because in a way then you, you bring into, into the whole mix how do you manage that process, how do you edit that process. The digital world has brought with it another way of the public engaging with everything and us engaging with the public. How specific can we be? How can we not be drawn down the language made by those people who invented the digital world? Can we bring our own language to it? Can we bring our own assessment and particularity to it?